Uh, I'm recording the meeting and I'll note that all uh, five committee members are present. Okay. <clears throat> um, first, uh, any comments about the minutes from our last meeting? Any corrections? If not, can I have a motion to approve the minutes, please? So move. Second. Okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes, indicate aye. by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Update on the road rehabilitation and maintenance program. <clears throat> All right, that's you, Julian. That's me. Okay, bear with me. I'm working with a new laptop today, so um, not everything's where I'm used to, but let's. Uh... By the way, I really like the way we got the, the slides in advance. Um, I think the chair had requested that at the last meeting, and it was great to have them. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Okay, uh, does that work or are you looking at the preview version of it? Looks okay. Okay. I think. All right. Uh, so this is a, an update um, on our paving program uh, from where we were at our last meeting. And so I've got a, a clip on the title sheet here that's from the MTC press release. Um, so uh, MTC is the organization that looks after transportation funding for the nine Bay Area counties, um, and every year they do um, a report on the condition of the streets, and they do a, a press release when they um, publish that information. And so, for the second year in a row, Larkspur was specifically uh, called out in their press release for um, the great improvement we have in our streets over time. Um, so that's the the headline from the MTC press release. Here's the map that we show each time that shows our progress. Again, the, the streets that have a color to them other than gray were included in the Measure B program. Um, the streets that are just the gray lines were paved prior to Measure B, uh, mostly with Measure C. Um, and then what we've done here is each year as we go through this, we put a, a gray area over the streets that we've completed. So um, this is the plan at the beginning of this year's project. So um, at the moment, we're doing our group four project. So some of these orange streets that are in our final uh, paving project um, have been paved already. And then by January or February, the, the, the rest of those orange streets should have been paved. Um, this is the chart, the same one that we've been showing from the beginning. So the first um, three columns are unchanged. Those are the um, projects that we proposed as part of the uh, five-year paving plan and the um, estimated dollar values for those projects, the 25.3 million. Um, the next column is updated to true costs to date. So this is money that's actually been spent on the paving, um, on the paving contractors. So that's uh, $17.8 million worth of uh, pavement has gone down on the streets, and that's updated all the way through um, the end of uh, Magnolia and East Sir Francis Drake were the two most recent uh, paving projects that we did, and Doherty Drive. Um, and so the next column is um, the cost of streets that haven't been paved yet. Um, these are, for the most part, are all based on contracted bids. I'll uh, show you that on the next slide. Uh, but this tracks um, what we've spent um, versus uh, what was budgeted for. So that last column there is just kind of a running tally of um, how the projects have come in, either under budget or um, over budget. And you'll notice that the group two and three projects came in quite a bit under budget, but uh, a part of that was because we had to defer some streets for utility uh, projects. And so you'll see there's a corresponding overspend on group four, uh, where we've done some catch up on those group two and group three streets. Um, but the bottom line here is we're projecting that we're going to end up close to, to 1.9 million below that 25.3 um, that we initially um, estimated. 
uh, when we're all finished. And like I said, 17.8 million of this is, is done. It's in the books. So the only variance we have left is on this 5.6 million of uh, work that's left to be done. Um, and of those, most of those costs are already uh, penciled in. Uh, the biggest cost is the group four of the Measure B project. That's the one that's underway right now that's paving the streets over in West Baltimore and, and Holcomb. And it also includes um, South Elysio. That contract has been awarded. Um, so barring any significant change orders, those dollars are pretty much uh, tied down. Um, the crosswalk enhancements, uh, we've already done one phase of that. Um, it'll come in right around the 150. Um, the pathway stairs on Elm Avenue, um, that's probably not going to get underway until uh, spring, but it'll be close to that number. Um, and then Shady Lane, um, which is a concrete street we have to pave out by West Baltimore, has not gone out to bid um, yet. We didn't quite make it in time to do it this year, um, so it, uh, that will be spring um, also. Um, so those are the projects that are um, left to be uh, completed under the Measure B program. Um, and as I mentioned, um, the latest MTC pothole report is out. Um, and in the press release, they did uh, call out Larkspur's 11 point increase in our PCI. Um, and again, the PCI gets reported in two different ways. Um, the pothole report that they do reports out a three year blended average. So um, that's what technically MTC recognizes our PCI in. And that's the, the long red box down below. Um, it shows Larkspur um, and then it shows a value for 2019, 20 and 21. So it reports a 67, but that's our three-year blended average. Um, our actual, um, as it is today, or actually this was January um, of 2021, was a 76. Um, so our PCI is actually higher than that today because Magnolia has been paved, Doherty has been paved, and East of Francis Drake has been paved. And that's not reflected in the 76 number. So um, this number will probably be in the the low to mid 80s uh, next year. And then again, MTC will report out that three year blended average uh, that'll probably be in the mid 70s uh, next year, but uh, progress for sure um, in these numbers. And here it is in um, the graphical format. So again, um, this is a, a chart that we've been showing from the beginning and we're showing uh, the orange line here is the aggregate for Marin County, uh, taking all the counties, roads, and unincorporated and all the cities and combining them together. Um, shows what the um, county's blended three-year PCI trend has been from 2003 to 2021. And then the blue line um, that has historically always been under the counties is Larkspur. And this is the first year that, um, based on that three-year blended average, we've actually um, eclipse the average for, for the county. And so if you look at that trend, like I mentioned, that's going to keep um, going up uh, next year. And again, this is just looking at the three-year uh, blend. So that's a quick update on the paving program and where we are and uh, probably about five or six months uh, more of, of paving work and we'll be through our five-year plan. So I'm available hey. if anybody has any questions. Any questions, anybody? Okay. Well, it Let's... looks great. Uh, I, uh, I incidentally, the the uh, 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 the press release that came out uh, was duly reflected in either the IJ or the Chronicle or both. So we did. Larchper got mentions in those uh, in those papers. <laughs> yeah. Excellent work. And um, Julian, while we've got you, I've got a question. Yes. Yeah, so um, no, thanks again for getting back to me when I reached out to you about what was happening in Magnolia and Palm or um, 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 and now right up here around my corner. Um, are, are there any other places that are that pg e is behind that will have to be cut up again? Or is this like a one, just like the one spot that we think that's going to happen? It's never a one time thing with pg e They actually approached us last week because they wanted to install uh, new gas mains on uh, La Rosa and parts of Holcomb, um, but 
they could not commit to a schedule. Uh, they basically wanted us to push those streets off so they could install their gas lines, uh, but they couldn't commit that they were going to be able to do it within the next year. So uh, we're going to go ahead and pave those streets anyway. They'll be on a moratorium. They'll have to repave the entire street um, if they decide to, to come back. It's not emergency work. If it's, you know, if they've got a gas line that's leaking or they have emergency work, then um, you know, they, they go ahead and they do it and they have to do a lot of repaving, but these are, uh, planned, uh, updates, but their budget right. changes like a lot of places every year. And sometimes they think they're going to get to a gas line replacement project and other priorities crop up and it gets pushed out. So we don't really want to take the risk of having to wait a few years for them, you know, to, to finally get those projects underway. Um, you know, there's going to be emergencies that are going to crop up from here to here, and they're going to have to dig the street out. And for the most part, we take an in lieu fee, um, as opposed to having them uh, repave the entire blocks. But those in lieu fees have, have built up over time. And so um, that'll be useful as we move forward, maintaining the streets after we're finished our repaving project. Great. Thanks, really. Okay. Thank you. Let's move on to... Uh financial information. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The few items that I distributed to the committee for your digestion. And I uh, want to note as we go through the item, I appreciate uh, I wasn't able to speak with James, but he did leave me several questions. So I'll be prepared as he asks them as we go through uh, the process. Uh, one of the items you have is the detail report for the current fiscal year. Um, it hasn't been a lot of activity in the fund so far this fiscal year. Um, we also provided you, uh, and we'll talk about when uh, Kathy present, or when I present Kathy's uh, statement on the next item, but we provided the the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes. That's our financial statement for the year that was recently given to us by the auditors. Um, you can see the funds very healthy. Uh, you'll recall that you created a uh, reserve for the fund. Uh, you recommended a reserve for the fund. The council created it in July. Um, the council then asked us to go into a holding pattern, essentially um, with the use of measure B, beyond the street program until we saw the results of the measure, um, the measure G ballot measure that recently passed. Um, with that, I'm available for questions. And like I said, I know James has several because he, he provided them to me in advance, but I thought you may want to ask them so the whole committee can hear. Go uh, ahead, Jim. Sure. Um, I, um... Uh, how much, uh, well, in, in looking at um, Kathy Orm's uh, memo, it's uh, item five, it says uh, the um, Measure B fund transferred $1.610 million to Larkspur Public Financing Authority and that they were to cover debt service for the road rehab and the administration fees. And what, how, much, how much was for the debt service and how much for, was for the fees? How did that break out? Uh, in total, we paid three entities' fees. Uh, the overall administrative fee was uh, $5,000. Uh, we have use a firm called NBS, which um, essentially uh, issues a lot of the collection notices uh, relating to the bonds. Uh, we paid them $1,800 last year, and then Union Bank collected its fees, which are $3,200. The rest is the debt service. So in total, all the fees are around $10,000. And that's probably about what they'll be each year. Uh, and nothing for the, um, nothing for the um, uh, sales tax audit? So the sales tax audits, actually, you'll see in the um, ledger, in the detail report, there was a $300 charge. Um, so Kathy Orm charges the sales tax firms bills straight into the measures uh, account, the fund. So you'll see there's a $300 charge there. I, I saw that, yes. I'm just, in terms of the detail report, um, as you mentioned, there's a, a delayed receipt of, uh, of uh, funds. And I can see for the first line items, first four line items, it comes in and then it goes out. 
uh, transferred the prior year. And then there's a $300 for the uh, sales tax audit hinterlater. And then there is um, uh, two more line items, which are, uh, uh, tr which are transfers for things that came in at 9 and 10. And so uh, what, um, what, what, what do those last two represent? So negative numbers in the detail report are revenue. So that's oh, their revenue. revenue. So that's those are the actual sales tax receipts for July and August. I understand. So negative is and ne negative. Means yeah, that's a, you got to put your accounting hat on. I I've got it. Okay. Um, now uh, is the um was the uh, second question is the uh, has the uh, fiscal year uh, twenty one twenty two statements been audited yet? That's what you have in the packet. That is the auditor's report. Um, the pages that are relevant for Measure B. Uh, we'll be presenting the full audit to the council probably in January this year. Great. And and I take it there were no comments or exceptions relating to the Measure B accounts. No, there were no comments. And you, there's a footnote on those pages about a note. The only note that's relevant for that pages is that the auditors have a note that all the major funds were created either by state law or council uh, action. In the case of Measure B fund, it was created by the council. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I saw that. Uh, incidentally, I think I may have mentioned this before, but it, it would probably be helpful for the record um, for um, uh, Kathy's memos to affirmatively state that the uh, fund has been audited and that what or rather the um, that the audit has been completed so that and and that these are audited numbers we see. I'll make a note and, uh, and suggest that to her. It did say that it did say that in the agenda. The agenda, I think, said something about the audited statements, but it would just be helpful to have it crystal clear to have an additional sentence in there that says uh, the audit has been completed and uh, and these are the the actual pages that uh, are are out of the um, the audit uh, report. Uh, let's see. I think uh, maybe two more questions on. Uh, uh, there's a uh, I use. Let's see. Uh, on the um, on the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes uh, that. Uh, it, there is a on the I on the Measure B fund column uh, on line one two three four. There's a uh, a parenthetical twenty six five two two, which is labeled use of money and property. What is that? So uh, the Fair Accounting Standards Board issued a statement giving our auditors guidelines about how they want the what they call the fair value measurement of our investments to be reflected. So I asked Kathy how I explain this in layman's terms, and she said the easiest thing to say is that represents the loss that occurred in uh, fair market value or value of the Measure B money in the account where we sit. So instead of making interest, we we applied a, a portion of our losses to, to the Measure B fund proportionate to the amount of money. Measure B has sitting in what's called our LAFE account, our local agency investment fund. And losses from what? Well, essentially, LAFE lost money. And so the auditors want us to show that uh, that our basic investment account lost money last uh, last year. Oh. How did they lose money? I don't know. I, I, I've put another question into Kathy to better understand this is an accounting thing that I don't, I, I have to acknowledge is new to me. It's new to, to our audit. Um, and I can bring Kathy to, a next, to the next meeting to talk about, um, and I can send you all, she says it's statement number 157, it's called the fair value measurement um, instructions from, from the Financial Accounting Standards Board. I can send it to everybody to review. Um, Larry, go ahead. Oh, excuse me. Can the record uh, record show that Kathleen has had joined the meeting? For the record, please. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah. What What's happening is that with the interest rates going up, the value of these securities will go down 
until they get to the point they fully mature. So what, what they're doing is what they call a mark to market. They take the value of the securities at a specific point in time, and you're going to have an unrealized gain or loss. So if you were to sell those today, if Leif were to sell those today, they would actually realize a loss because the interest rate has gone up. But if they hold them to maturity, they'll yeah. get the full value of the bond. Yeah. I mean, okay. if they hold them to maturity, they're just going to get whatever they would normally get at the end of the term. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Larry. All right. Any other questions on this before we go to the audited financial statement? If not, let's yep. shift. Over I do. I have to one you. quick. Sorry, one one quick question for Dan. Just um, uh, in reading the the Larkspur highlights, little you know, top five, twenty five producers of uh, tax revenue. Um, quick question is, and, and maybe it's hidden somewhere. I'm sure you probably answered this before. Um, I don't see Safeway on there. Just sort of curious why that is. Safeway's in Corte Madera. Well, that explains it. You're right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Too bad we can't get their revenue. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Okay. But, you. Uh, you know, there's a lot of alcohol sales already on that list of 25 top producers. All right. Moving on to number five. I so then, financial. Yeah. I, I just want to say, I, I, I appreciate the, um, the, uh, the information uh, about the, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, but the, uh, the sales tax update. Um, but they certainly seem to be resolutely optimistic. And um, I have to say that everything and else I keep reading elsewhere is not optimistic, including you know the state budget projections and the the sales tax, the the uh, the income tax. I mean the sales and income taxes for the state, et cetera, et cetera. So <laughs> there sort of seems to be a substantial difference between. Uh, what is being uh, predicted uh, uh, by the uh, authors of the um, sales tax update and what the uh, people who are looking at the overall state picture uh, are, are saying. Well, I'll only comment briefly. Um, I meet with HDL quarterly. I had a meeting with them a few weeks back. Um, they don't expect our local sales tax to flatten out for another 18 months. And even then, they're only expecting it to flatten, um, not to, to diminish. The only thing that, of course, as a, as a minor aside, with Bed Bath & Beyond closing the store in, in Larkspur, we have to, to think about what will happen out there. But the growth in Marin Country Mart has been so strong, it's probably already offset most of that loss. Is, is Bed Bath & Beyond uh, closed already, by the way? I haven't been out there, James. I don't know if it's in a, I mean, I haven't been out to the actual store. I've been out in Marin Country Mart. I don't know if they've closed the doors, but the last time I was in there, it wasn't a lot of product left. Mm. Okay, let's move on to number five, please. Sure. Yeah, that's probably you. Yeah. So this is uh, one of your required actions, which is to um, review the financial statements, which actually got bundled into the prior item. Um, and then what we worked out because the committee uh, didn't want to spend the money on an independent audit, because that would have been using a significant amount of taxpayer money to audit what's a fairly simplistic fund. We included as part of the citywide audit, and then Kathy does this attestment about the statements. So um, she's provided you with her attestment that what the auditors have provided you is part of our comprehensive audit, and uh, she's provided you with a summary of the information, including uh, that the net positive fund balance at the end of the last fiscal year was 5.4 million. It's good. So this would be the one action item, which is to, to uh, accept uh, this report. Any comments on the report? Can I have a well, motion? With, with, with the, I would move with the understanding that this represents the actual audited report and there were no comments uh, on it. Uh, I, would, I would move to, to accept it. 
Second. Second. I'll second. Tamara seconded. Any comments before we vote? If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, carries. Um, public comment. Um, I just want, I want to make two comments. One was um, if you haven't driven by Piper Park in the evening, do so because the, 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 the holiday lights that are on those trees is just really extraordinary. Um, I had never seen, I hadn't seen that before. And I was, I was driving to my daughter's and all of a sudden I looked to my left and it was just, just incredible. So I don't know who thought of that, but it was, it's a great thing for the community. And I've seen a lot of positive buzz on it. I want to acknowledge uh, Nick Stone in our recreation department and also the Commons Foundation, the entity that's been raising money for the library. They're, they're the powers behind that. It's a bit of an experiment this year, but we've been getting only positive feedback. So we'll probably expand it next year. Great. And the other thing I, I want to say positively, um, I I think the striping that's going on on the roads has been is really good. It's such an upgrade from the previous striping. The use of the green, um, it all just looks much more organized and clearer for the, um, the people who are driving. And it would be exciting if actually people would stop at stop signs uh, and actually obey the law, that would be nice. But short of that, at least the striping is really nice. Um, so kudos to those people. Um, is there anybody here on the public? I don't think so. Anybody have a comment they want to address for the common good? I, I did. I, I have a couple. One, one I guess, to Dan and uh, technical and then uh, one to the committee. Uh, Dan, do we ha are we among those who have to technically pass one of those resolutions allowing for, uh, for Zoom meetings? I see the other uh, commissions and committees do it, and we never have, and I wonder if we're supposed to do that technically. No, the council passes one that applies to all its boards and commissions, so you're okay with that. Great, and the other uh, the uh, comment to... Uh, my fellow committee members would be, do we want to consider uh, in a spirit of optimism uh, moving to um, moving to uh, uh, in-person meetings uh, next uh, or hybrid uh, if that's feasible? I mean, I, I know the other some of the other commissions do it uh, uh, in, in, in our next meeting, which would be in June. We can take everybody's pulse like six weeks out from the meeting. See where the world is then. Yeah, I mean that if, would be if, great. If COVID, the flu, and everything else is running rampant, I don't, I don't know that I want to do that personally. No, if it's really, uh, if it's still going on, uh, it seems to be coming back now. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean it's. Let's see what happens. Any other comments? Okay. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank everyone. you, everybody. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Thank Julian. You. Happy holidays, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Good evening, everyone.